Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, or welcome if you are new. Hi, my name is Nikki, and I post a variety of different types of videos on this channel, but I'm sure as you guys can already see from the title, today is going to be a hamster video. And this video is probably gonna be very entertaining for some of you guys, because I am going to be talking about my hamster horror stories. Now, what I mean by that is these are just stories that caused me great anxiety. I didn't know what was gonna happen in the end. I was very scared for my hamster's life, pretty much. Yes, that is what these stories are going to be talking about. Now, I'm gonna be telling these in chronological order. I have three stories for you guys today. They all involve a different hamster, and one of them actually happened last week with Rhino. Um, and some of you guys probably already know kind of what it is if you follow my hamster Instagram But I'm gonna be telling that story last because I'm gonna be starting with my first hamster horror story and going Chronologically through my first hamster horror story to my second to my third in order of how they happened to me Feel free to comment down below if anything similar happened to you guys But let's just go ahead and get on to the video Yes, yeah. adore you all of the time. I like to. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We are going to go ahead and start off with my very first hamster story and this was with my very first hamster, Tinky. So I talked about Tinky in my hamster journey part one video and if you have not watched those videos, I would highly suggest watching those at first because it just talks about all of my past hamsters so you guys can just kind of get a better idea of my past hamsters and everything. This first hamster horror story was with Tinky. He was a winter white hamster and he was white. When I was little, I had him when I was like eight or nine, I think. So whenever I was little, I would just let my hamsters like run around my room willy nilly. Uh, at this time, I did not have a cat and my dog didn't come upstairs. So he was just free to kind of run around wherever he wanted to and I would watch him. At this age, I didn't really like think too far ahead and block off any areas. That was not a good idea on my part, but I would just let him run around all the time, which was good because hamsters do enjoy free roaming, but you have to make sure that you block off certain areas so they can't get to any wires or get to any places where you can't reach them. So he was actually running around in my sister's bathroom one day and I didn't think that there was anywhere in this bathroom that he could get stuck. It was very open. It's not very hard to see anywhere in the bathroom. So I was like, he's fine running around in there. Pretty much, I was just letting him run around. And then I think I wasn't in there. I think I just closed the door and was letting him run around. And then I can't really remember this too, too well, but I just like remember the general gist. So then I guess I come back into the room I can't find him anywhere in the bathroom. I'm like, where is he? Cause it's not that hard to look all around the floor. It's not a very large bathroom. I will try to put in some clips if I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. But pretty much there's like the cabinets and then there's like a little sill, like under the cabinets. It's really hard to explain, but cabinets. And then there's like the bottom of the cabinet. And so the cabinet kind of comes like here and then it's like comes over like this and then here's the actual face of the cabinet so that you can open the door on this side. What Tinky did was he like crawled over here to the bottom of the cabinet. This is like the base of the cabinet. He crawled over, he crawled up into the hole and then over down here inside the cabinet where you can't just open the cabinet and see down because there's like the bottom of the cabinet. This is really confusing, but pretty much he crawled inside the cabinet to where we could not get him like inside the sill of the cabinet. This was freaking terrifying for me. I didn't know what to do. I was literally ready to go over there with a saw or something and like start cutting. Obviously that would have been very dangerous for Tinky, but I did not know what else to do. And I was like, my hamster is not just going to die in this freaking cabinet, like what am I gonna do? So we 
started dropping down little food into this little cabinet and we could hear him like scratching on the cabinet and we were like, how are we gonna get him out? So yeah, we started just dropping food down there. We dropped some carrots down there. So he was eating at least, but we were like, this is not gonna go on for very long. Like he needs water, he needs to get out of here. So what we did was we actually took a shirt sleeve and so we put it into the hole like this so that he was over here. And so we like put the shirt sleeve into the hole and we were like, we don't know what else to do. We went to sleep that night. This happens like in the middle of the day, I think. So we went to sleep and he was still in there. I was stressed out. Eight year old me was like dying inside. I'm sure I cried a lot. I tend to cry a lot when I get stressed. So I went to sleep. And then I wake up, I go straight to the bathroom. This was my sister's bathroom, by the way. So I just walk in there and bam, he is on his wheel. He is just in his cage running. And what my sister said is that she woke up, she went in on, and checked on him in the morning. And by the way, something I left out was whenever we found the, out that he was um, in the cabinet, we took his cage, which uh, looks like this. It was this little critter trail looking cage, very small, don't use it. Don't buy that cage, but that's what I used at the time. So we put his cage, we set it on the floor in there. We left the cage door open so that if he was able to crawl through the, the, crawl through the shirt sleeve, he would be able to crawl right back into his cage, get food, get water, and get everything else that he would need. We just left the cage, we left the door open, and then my sister walks in the next morning, and apparently she just sees him running on his wheel. Boom. Magic. I don't know how he got out. I'm guessing it's the shirt sleeve, so what I think happened is that he was over here, the shirt sleeve was like this. He must have crawled up through the shirt sleeve, and crawled out like this and then he must have found his cage and just started running on the wheel and all was good. He survived, Tinky lived for quite some time after that. That was like the middle of his life so that didn't really affect him and he was good to go. Very, very scared and sad at that time because I was like, I, don't, I didn't know if he was gonna survive, but he did and all was well. So that was my first hamster horror story. Now we're gonna move on to the second one, which this one for me is probably the scariest one out of the three that I'm gonna be telling you guys. So this one happened with my third hamster, Smudge, and this happened, I believe in like 2017? maybe 2016, somewhere around there. Preface this video. Whenever I used to clean my hamster's cages, I used to always put them in like one of those little play pens. And so I would just put like a bunch of toys in there and I would just set them in there and they could run around in the play pen while I clean their cage. So that's what I did with Smudge this day. I just put the play pen on my ground in my room and I put him in there while I was cleaning out his cage. And at this time, we had actually gotten my cat. I think we got him in like 2015. So this was after Tinky's time. So we don't really let my hamsters free roam a whole lot, just the upstairs anymore because that's way too dangerous. If my cat were to just come along and be like, a little hamster, hmm, what am I gonna do with this? Yeah, and so I was just letting Smudge run around in the playpen while I cleaned out his cage and I must have left the door open or something because the next thing that I see, and I didn't really think, I was like, my cat's not gonna come in my room. Like, he's just not gonna come in my room because my cat doesn't really come in my room that much. He m normally just stays in my sister's room or he stays downstairs or something. That was not a good assumption. That was not a good assumption at all because I come into my room from cleaning his cage. I can't exactly remember what happened. All I know is that I see my cat, Skippy by the way, his name is Skippy. He has my hamster, Smudge, in his mouth and he's like darting all around and I'm like, Skippy has Smudge. I like scream, 
Skippy sprints out the door of the, my room, down the stairs, Smudge is still in his freaking mouth, and he like darts into my dining room, and then we see a very scared little Smudge on the ground. We, I immediately go run over to him, I scoop him up, and I like check his body, see if he has anything in his mouth or anything wrong with him and he looks fine i don't think that my cat was necessarily killing him he was probably taking him to kill him yes so my cat is definitely a predator he likes to go after lizards and things like that so i don't know what would have happened if he had continued to have smudge maybe he would have just played with him but I'm not gonna think about that. So I grab Smudge, I take him, and I run him back to the cage, and he is luckily fine. All of these I have evaded disaster by literally the skin of my teeth. Like, I don't even know how this happened. Well, yes, I do. I left the door open, which is my bad, and that's that was very irresponsible of me to do that, and I should have made sure someone was watching him. But unfortunately, I did not do that. So anyways, Smudge was fine. He lived for, again, like a year or two after that experience. He was a little traumatized for the night, but he was overall, he was fine in the end. And this hopefully will teach you guys to just not leave your doors open when you are letting your hamster roam around, especially if you have a cat. I always see TikToks, or at least I've seen a couple of TikToks where like hamsters are like cuddling with like puppies and like kittens or like other animals. Please, please, please do not let your hamster interact with any other animals or anything else but you really. You should be the only living thing that your hamster is really interacting with, besides maybe a mealworm or something. But yeah, do not put your hamster on your dog or something. It might look cute in the moment, but your hamster is probably going to be traumatized. Anywho, now we are on to the third hamster horror story. This is the last one I'm gonna be telling you guys today. And this is the most recent one. This one actually happened last week with Rhino, or it could have been the week before. But after this happened, I was like, I really need to make this video because I just need to update you guys on what happened. And also, hopefully I can let you guys know what happened to me so this does not happen to any of you guys. Because let me just tell you, hamsters are escape artists. And you have to be prepared and ready and not do what I did. Let's go ahead and get on to this one. So pretty much with Rhino, his cage sits on this little desk in, or not little desk, but this desk in my family room. And his cage, the lid didn't lay flat before this. It laid like at a slant. So I would always put his hide house over here so that if he wanted to crawl up, he couldn't. He couldn't escape out of like if you crawled up on the top of his hide house or anything. So it was always propped open a little bit on the top because I had his water bottle holder and I just got it to kind of show you guys. So this would kind of be on the side of the cage like this. So the top of the cage could never really lay completely flat. And I actually thought this was a good thing because his cage is so big that sometimes it like peeks out of the cage slightly. So I would put his water bottle here so it would kind of let the cage be a little bit taller so the cage wasn't constantly hitting the top of the wheel and slowing it down for him. I didn't see that there was any way that he could escape because there was nothing he could climb up on to get out of the cage, get out of the um, little crack that I had for him. Everything that he could possibly climb up on was on this the side of the cage where the cage was latched. So one of the latches was always latched in the cage. It was only one latch that I let prop open so the cage could kind of um, let the wheel run and put the water bottle here. I was like, it's fine. I had it in there for like, since I got Rhino, it had pretty much been like this and I had been using this water bottle holder. Unfortunately though, it's never a good idea to not close your cage fully unless your cage is really tall. And my cage is tall, but it's not really tall. And Rhino 
is a very active hamster. He is always running or doing something in his cage. So last week I was just downstairs. I was editing a YouTube video and my sister calls from upstairs. She's like, Rhino's in my room. Nikki, wait, actually no, she's just calling my name. She's like, Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. And I'm like, what is it? So I'm like, yes. And she's like, Rhino's in my room. And I'm like, what the heck? So I sprint up the stairs and I like immediately start bawling my eyes out because I thought something was wrong. Uh, I thought my cat had gotten to him or something. And I was just like crying immediately. So I run into her room and she's she's like Rhino's in here and I'm like what do you mean he's like I just saw him on the floor and I'm like how the heck is he on the floor so we're like we're looking around in her room and we find him and he looks fine he's just running around like normal and so I give him a seed and then I scoop him up and he looks fine and I put him back in the cage so pretty much what I think happened is that uh, somehow he crawled out through the crack. Originally, I thought that my cat had somehow gotten into the cage and done something, but I don't think that that's the case because the cage lid was still on like normal. So I probably would not have noticed that he had escaped until that night when I always go and check on him and give him food and fresh water and everything. So this could have gone so much worse if I had not noticed, if my sister had not been sitting in her room. She was just sitting in her room on a chair watching Netflix and then she says that she just saw Rhino like scuttle past her and she like out of the corner of her eye and she's like, what is that? Like what? She thought it was like a rat or a mouse or something. Uh, she, and this is like all the, she told me and then she saw, the scary thing is that she saw Rhino scuttle past and then she saw Skippy, which is my cat. She just saw Skippy like walking behind him slowly and so she scooped up Skippy, she ran Skippy out of there and then she called me and then that's when all that happened. He escaped. I, I, I'm I, sure it was from the um, lid not being completely closed and so that's why I do not have this water bottle holder anymore. That is trash. I'm not gonna use that anymore unless I just drill it in or something. But you guys have been suggesting to me anyways that I should start using a water dish anyways, which this honestly gave me the perfect opportunity to start using a water bowl because if this something like this had never happened, I probably would have continued using a water bottle because water bowls do take a lot more maintenance because with Rhino he is always putting a bunch of bedding and things in there so every day I have to take the bedding out if there is any and then fill it up with fresh water. He uses it just fine. Your hamster is going to use a water bowl just fine and it doesn't it means that he doesn't have to like crane his neck anymore which is good on my part and I now fixed the cage so that the lid just lays flat I latch both sides so he's not gonna be getting out anytime soon or hopefully at all um, on my watch I just made the bedding a little bit lower on the wheel side so that the wheel can run without hitting the top of the cage too so that's good Rhino wasn't harmed he didn't really seem frazzled or anything just got out and he is a very active little boy so yeah, those were my hamster horror stories. I hope that I explained those well enough. I'm sorry if that was a little confusing here and there. Please don't forget to subscribe down below. Thank you guys so, so, so much for 1,000 subscribers. I'm sorry I couldn't say it in my last video because that one was pre-filmed. Which, by the way... Did I just say... Which, by the way... <laughs> If you have not seen my trying Pamela Reef ab workouts, I would definitely suggest watching that video. I put so, so much time and effort into that video. I was editing that for like three days straight. So if you like workout videos, check that out. If not though, I have a bunch of different hamster videos on my channel for you guys to watch. Again, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed hearing it. All of these hamsters were ultimately unharmed in this video 
and I definitely changed things based on these stories. One more thing that I do want to say is that if you guys have any hamster questions, a lot of you guys have been reaching out to me on Instagram and asking me a bunch of different hamster questions that you have about your hamster care and I do just want to say I am not a hamster expert or perfectionist or anything as you have just heard from these stories I have made definitely made some hamster mistakes but I would be so happy to help you guys with your hamster care and I love seeing all of the pictures of you guys' hamster cages and your hamsters in general they are so freaking cute and I love giving you guys as many tips as I possibly can about anything hamster related or anything in general so yeah definitely reach out to me on my Instagram just DM me at fuzz.ball.hams and that is it. Just thought I would say that. Don't forget to turn on post notifications, by the way, so you know every time I post. And yeah, that is it for this video. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.